Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Video Truder. Welcome back to Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, where things are going not as I expected, to be honest. Over on the Germanic frontier, everything's going great. Honestly, better than I thought it was going to go. The problems instead are over on the eastern frontier with the Eastern Roman Empire, where these bastards have attacked us, and as it turns out, yeah, the hordes are actually heading in that direction, and... Pretty much the worst thing that can happen has happened, which is the Huns are in the process of attacking the Sarmatians, and the Sarmatians, though they're going to put up a damn good fight, are going to lose that. And if they do lose that, they're going to become a horde. And the Vandals have attacked the Goths, and they're going to put up one hell of a fight too, but if they lose that, they're going to become a horde. And that means four hordes simultaneously. And those hordes might well wipe out huge parts of the Eastern Roman Empire, down over here in Greece, but... Once they're done with that, they're heading in my direction. And there's no actual river to hold them off around here. I mean, if they come over this bridge, there's a river right there. But yeah, if they actually come in from Greece itself, they can just walk straight up the coast. And then they're straight in northern Italy, into my economic and military heartland. And then we're in a bit of trouble. But there is one advantage, I suppose, to that, which is uh, these cities uh, have huge epic stone walls. We could kill a lot of barbarians if they try and push in this way. That is most certainly flipping true. Also, I've realised something I really need to be spending some money on. And that is Rome itself. You see, up here around the Germanic frontier, we've actually got some decent production facilities going on. Just for day-to-day -day troops like Comet Tensors and whatnot. But down over here in Rome, this is where you might want to be training at least some of your armies. Because here is where we've got the flipping technology. In particular, the siege engineer. Nice flipping stuff. We need to start getting some artillery into our armies. But there's more here as well. I'm going to start off with, yeah, the army barracks. The first army barracks we'll have in the entire empire. And this starts opening up some really fun new stuff. So right now our heavy infantry is the Comet Tensas, but there's also the Plumbatarii. Now these guys are a little bit more expensive, but in all fairness, barely at all. Just look at that, 900 versus 850. The upkeep cost is the same, but the Plumbatarii are just a tiny, tiny bit better. Specifically, they're better with their thrown weapons, because their thrown weapons are more powerful, and they also get more of them. They've got more ammo. So if you've got the choice, basically you want to replace every single Comet Tensas in the Empire with Plumbatari eventually. But arguably, much more importantly, the Auxilia Palatina. These guys are your elite spearmen with a defense of 25, armor of 10, attack of 7, and proper bonus fighting cavalry as well. Good morale, good stamina. These guys are hardcore, and they can make a shield wall. Brand new formation, wasn't in Rome Total War, shows up in Barbarian Invasion. It's basically a good defensive formation. It's not a phalanx, it doesn't give them any bonus damage to their attack, but it does mean they're much, much better at holding the line. And with defense of 25 and a shield wall, basically, they can just hold the line for flipping ever. It takes a very long time for even elite enemies to chop their way through Auxilia Palatina when you've actually got a shield wall up. So we most definitely want to be getting those guys in the army. There's also Priventores. These are basically the Arcani from Rome to the War. But the Arcani in Rome to the War were pretty much bloody pointless. And so are these guys. So let's not even worry about it. Ah uh, yes, and Carthage is under siege from a tiny Berber force. Well, I think we can take care of that, actually. I think the AI's realised it's made a catastrophically stupid mistake. Yeah, it's naffing off before the battle even begins. Fair enough. Don't go back, you stupid losers. If they bring all of this together, that's a bit of a problem. Yeah, the thing about the Berbers is, they don't really have anyone else to attack. Like, there's Carthage and there's Lepkis Magna... And that's about it. They don't border anybody else. So uh, that's kind of all they have to do in their entire life. It's just attack Carthage over and over and over again. So at some point, I'd like to put together an army to go and, you know, smash the Berbers. But I'd also like to put together an army to go and smash the Celts. And the Saxons. And the Eastern Roman Empire. And basically everybody. Alright? Any individual problem the Western Roman Empire faces, you could go and deal with. But they're all coming at once. Together with the ever-present threat of new hordes emerging any flipping second. Like two of them might be about to any flipping moment. Well, that's my money all spent. Time to figure out what's gonna go wrong next, I suppose. And the answer is... Okay, there's been... Oh, okay, the Goths are putting up a fight. The Goths will put up a fight. 
And actually, they're doing... Okay, why are you attacking one at a time? Don't... Don't attack one at a time! But actually, you know what? They were finally able to win. Yeah, the thing is, these armies, while they're numerous, they're not great. Some of their spearmen are pretty flimsy, but... Eventually, they will win. On the plus side, though, a lot of flipping vandals did just die. Alright, that's good news if they end up heading in my direction. A lot of them just got very badly... Oh, oh, we've got marvellously good news as well. They have called off the siege. These guys are not besieging the Sarmatian capital anymore. This is something they can do. Sometimes they'll start sieging somewhere, then they'll just, like, get bored and go and do something else. If they don't finish off the Sarmatians, that'd be flipping great. But you know what? It's probably worth us actually acknowledging what the hordes are actually doing and what they actually want. Because this is kind of important. When the Hordes take a city, they have two things they can do with it. They can choose to exterminate it, which basically just means they get a giant pile of money, the local population is massively reduced, and the city becomes a rebel city. It doesn't play by the same rules as Eastern or Western Roman rebels, however, in that the actual garrison left over is only what could be built in the city. It actually just gains a free magic garrison out of nowhere, as would happen in any other Total War game that's kind of vaguely culturally appropriate to wherever the city is. And it tends to be quite a good garrison as well, just to disincentivize anyone from just following slightly behind the hordes and immediately reclaiming any territory they've just exterminated. The other option they get, however, is to occupy. Because these hordes are not just going around trashing everything for fun, they are actually looking for a home. When they find somewhere they want to be their home, they will literally break down a third of their entire army strength and that will just become the local population of the city. And that will just become a Hun city. The rest of the forces can then just keep wandering around looking for another city. When they actually find a second city they want to occupy, then another third of their army will break down, leaving them with very few troops left at the end. And then they can find a third city and settle that too. And at that point, they're just a normal settled faction with three cities. And you can just start dealing with them like you would any normal faction. But just like the Franks, of course... If you were to wipe out their last city, they would re-horde. The only way to kill a horde faction is to actually wipe them out while they're still in horde mode, which can be very, very tricky to do indeed. Anyway, let's just move my spy in this direction. We need to get eyes on these guys. They might actually restart the siege momentarily when they've actually got all their troops lined up here. And yeah, they do also have actual flipping leaders. Surprisingly few though, I can only see like two. Where are the rest of your leaders? I feel like you're lacking leaders for some reason. Meanwhile, we've got a giant pile of vandals here, but yeah, these vandals, they're starting to take some knocks, damn it, and here we go. Step horde spearmen. Attack of seven, defense of 13. Not terrible, but not great either. These guys are not elite troops. They're numerous, but they're not the best of the best. They won't do well in a pitch battle versus a proper professionalized army. But of course, they will mostly have a big numeric advantage, which offsets that. But yeah, the Vandals are starting to look a little bit weakened. So uh, the Goths have done us a very, very big favor. But at this point, yeah, that Gothic force is being worn down fast. Luckily, there are some Eastern Romans nearby. Sure, we hate them, but they might be able to do a good job smashing some more Vandals. And right now, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Or to be precise, my enemy's enemy is also my enemy, but they're both dicks, so I hope they kill each other. Now, let's get a better view of that big Western Roman army. So, yeah, as I suspected, it's mostly just peasants. Which is a handful of spearmen and these guys as well. Because, yeah, peasants aren't free. They have very cheap upkeep, but they do still have upkeep. So all of these peasants are kind of screwing them over. Because, yeah, Salona doesn't exactly have the best economy in the world. Can I get inside? Probably a bit of a risk, to be honest. And uh, here we go. We've got a faction leader there. Two peasants. Salona is... Actually, Salona's only got a population of 6,000 right now. Roy, I'm guessing they've drained that into endless flipping peasants. Because, yeah, we're playing on huge unit scale. And remember, one of my favourite things about Rome Total War is there was a proper population system. If you trained a unit that had 240 men in it, then as a result of that, there were 240 men less inside the city you trained them from. It actually made sense, and then it never showed up again in any Total War game in the future, which I think was a terrible, terrible shame because it was a beautiful, brilliant system. But Salona is most definitely looking vulnerable. Alright, I think we need to actually get down over here and take this place back. But to do that, we need to murder these bastards. Which shouldn't be too difficult to do, to be perfectly honest. That should be manageable. But I don't dare actually bring all the forces of Spurious Flavius, the most Christian man who ever Christianed, down south to take Salona. 
because there's so many flipping Eastern Romans floating around Sirmium, and they'll just swing up north and take a Quincum if I leave it unguarded. I think we actually need, yeah, another force to come and take Salona, because it won't take a big force to do. Or we could just... We could just smash that force and just see what the Eastern Romans are doing. So I suspect once the Vandals start entering their territory, and they will be entering Thrace momentarily, and once they're inside Thrace, that's actually the same territory their capital is in. All right, so, oh, hang on. Huge city. Where's your capital? Hang on, that should be your capital. Because, yeah, if you hover over Colonia Dacia, it says Gothic capital. Yet here, this says huge city not... Why is that not saying capital? Possibly because the only reason I'm seeing it is because that's a city I need to take over in order to win the game ultimately. So maybe when I actually see it properly with, like, a spy, it'll update to say capital. I'm not sure. Now, Lepkis Magna, which we failed to take last time, but now we can put it straight back under siege. It's going to take, like, four turns <laughs> to actually build a battering ram. But now there's only one set of peasants left inside it because we killed the general, so his bodyguard's gone. So... Right, four flipping turns to build a single battering ram. Flipping marvellous. Can I just send some, like, cavalry? I don't have any cavalry there. Great. But I could definitely do with some more troops over at Carthage. I'm worried about Carthage. The Berbers are coming, and uh, they're starting to draw all these forces together. It's becoming more and more dangerous. Yeah, that's... That's getting a lot more dangerous, actually. And I have a decent assassin. I should be able to kill anyone they send in this direction but I can't wipe out the army. Assassins back in these days couldn't sabotage armies or do damage to units. They could only take out the general. I mean, one option would be a giant stone wall. Just actually make the defences tougher. Because that will be a tough nut to crack. Oh, by the way, really fun change from Rome to the War to incentivize building better walls. Walls now provided public order bonuses. They don't in Rome Total War, but yeah, in Barbarian Invasion, you actually get happiness and law bonuses that get stronger and stronger as the walls get better, which is really cool, because it incentivizes you to build proper epic stone walls, which otherwise, you don't have a huge amount of reason to do, to be honest. Now, probably the best thing for me to do, however, is get a legion barracks down, so I can actually have proper heavy infantry. And more specifically, I can actually engage with my existing competences because I'll actually, you know, have the ability to retrain them. Right now, in that last Sally battle, I was keeping them at the rear because I don't really want them to fight unless they absolutely flipping have to. But if they do have to fight, they'll be taking knocks. And uh, there's not really a retraining facility anywhere around here. Yeah, Legion Barracks in Carthage, probably not a bad idea. And in the meantime... Just some light cav would not be the worst thing in the world. Just so I've got some cavalry in that city. Now, Syracuse has been long overdue to actually pick up a proconsul's palace. And the longer I put it off, the worse squalor's gonna get. Which is not good news, but... That's expensive. That's Okay, come back to that one. I believe, actually, up here I saw Mediolanium. Yeah, we never actually repaired their palace, so we should probably get that fixed up too. And up in Germany, oh yeah, here's where things start getting a bit interesting. We've got ourselves... Oh, look at these sexy bastards. Uh, yeah, melee attack of 10, defense of 26, liking all of this. Right, new Sarmatian Auxilia. Get that with Caius Flavius. So Caius Flavius now has two units of really hardcore heavy cavalry. And I mean super heavy cavalry, well experienced, good stuff. Some hardcore spearmen, they'll stand up and fight against just about anything. These guys even flipping more so. There we go, experience three archers, missile attack of eight. Still terrible, but not like as terrible. And we have got, yeah, there we go. Get these guys retrained. That is flipping expensive, but it is worth it. Now, we already have six units ready to go, together with a Catholic priest. How are we doing? Oh, that army's starting to look good. That army's starting to look seriously good. Now, the big question. What do we want to do with this army, and what do we want to add into it? That is uh, six good quality combat tensors. That's good. You know what? I wouldn't mind it having just a bit more range. Okay, now that's... That's got some serious firepower behind it, a damn solid front line, and some damn heavy infantry to back it up when the day is done. That is a solid army right there, and I'm going to trust Caius Flavius with that, because this guy has loyalty of five, so that's absolutely flipping fine. In fact, I've made a bit of a decision about Caius Flavius, which is, this guy's flipping great. I love this guy, he's magnificent. 
And this guy down here, over in Rome, like, he's fine. He's absolutely flipping fine. He's a good manager, but we're never going to want him on the front line. So, Kaiser, which is basically this game's way of saying factionaire, should he really be that? I don't think he should really be that. I think, actually, we want Caius Flavius to be our next Augustus. Oh, I've just realised that's actually especially insulting. Decimus Flavius, that's actually his dad. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so flippin' sorry. But actually, your dad's gonna be Emperor, not you. Maybe you could be next, I'm not sure. There we go. So this guy is ready to kick some serious ass right there. Now, the problem is, hang on, first I just want to make sure I haven't ruined... No, I've not ruined Rome. This guy's still doing just fine. Everything's okay. What do I want to do with this army? Because this now is the sort of army that can go up against pretty much anything on the field and win. And the question is, what direction do I want to start it marching in? Because absolutely, we could send it south, take Salona, move straight onto Sirmium, and then be ready to intercept the hordes wherever it is they're coming. But it feels like, actually, the Vandals are not such a threat. Hopefully, they might actually be significantly weakened. We might be able to kill the Vandals. The Huns, not sure what they're doing yet. They might be about to abandon the Sarmatian territory and just start marching along this road. If they do, they're heading straight to Quincum and there's no bridges between them and me, which could be a bit of a problem. But it's going to take them a little while to do. What I'm feeling like is, uh, yeah, Caius Flavius... He could march north, knock the Saxons out of the game, hop straight in a boat, head over here, and deal with the flipping Celts once and for all. Except for one small issue, which is, uh, I think that might be absolutely massive overkill. I don't think we need this to deal with Saxons and Celts. I feel like this army would be better placed down over here, because this is where the threats are coming from right now. Which means that I've got a bit of a different plan. So, Spurius Flavius, the most Christian man who ever Christianed, he would actually be a very, very suitable candidate to go and deal with Britain. Because not only could he pacify the Celts, he could Christianise the island. Because right now, this place is hard to flip and Christianise because it's small, it's isolated, there's no benefit from, you know, huge amounts of territories surrounding you passing on huge amounts of Christian benefits. So yeah, Avaricum has got like, uh, yeah, 20% Christian conversion due to neighbouring settlements. Britain doesn't have that, it's a line of settlements that don't really surround each other. But if Spurius Flavius could just flip London Christian, move straight up to York, pick up some reinforcements, march up here, and convert these to Christianity too, that's... That could work. That could actually work pretty darn nicely. So, uh, I feel like Spurius Flavius, he's potentially got some good work he can do up here. How old is Spurius Flavius, by the way? Oh, he's only 30. He'll be around for a long time. And honestly, I don't want him on the front line of the hordes. He's too important. Because he is the only super converting force I've got in the entire empire right now. I mean, Valentinian himself is a little bit. I think he's like 15%. But this guy is ludicrous. He can just walk into any territory and just basically cause it to flip. Arguably, he's one of the most powerful weapons I've got. But he's not actually that good at fighting. So, uh, I would say we probably want him and a small honor guard to start heading north. And he can actually do it via Campus Quaddy. That's interesting. No one's taken this place just yet. I could actually go and take that. Yeah, go on then. So, Spurious, Spurious, Spurious. How about you just take a giant pile of cavalry and go handle that? Ah, sadly, even on his own, he can't quite get there. Unless, of course, aha! You can get there, though. Oh, now that works. That flipping works. You get over there, put the city under siege. Now, you guys merge into him, and you merge into that, and now this place is under siege. We will, however, need someone to, like, you know, push the actual ram, and this is uh, Spear Wall Band. We'll also need something to take out the, you know, spearmen, because there's actual spearmen here. So would you mind actually deploying a couple of units in this direction? There we go, that'll do. Right, you take this place. Honestly, you can do it in, like, one turn. And by, like, next turn, this place will already be, like, half Christian. It'll be amazing. That, however, does leave a Quincum without an actual leader. And we could do with them having a leader. So hang on, let's find a good candidate to ship over there. Here we go. Marcus the Gambler over in Augusta Trevorum. 
Not brilliant, but not terrible either. Good with infantry. Scarred, so he can stay alive. Ruled with luck isn't that bad. He's not a good manager. But then again, a quinkum isn't really about making money. So that shouldn't actually be a problem at all. Yeah, I think I'll actually just ship him over in that direction. Hang on, what's the fastest way to get him there? It is to go... How do we get you there nice and quickly? Oh, it's to go directly through Frankish territory. Oh, that's going to go down well. All right, we'll give it a go. We'll give it a flipping go. I think we can probably pull that off, just. That means that Caius Flavius starts marching south. He can actually join up with the road, and that'll be faster for him. So you, yeah, just head to Salona. You're going in this direction. And oh yeah, that's good. That's some good flipping stuff. And I believe Ravenna is... Yeah, highways are almost done here. How's this place doing? Ooh, we can't actually afford highways. That's a bit of a shame. Yeah, okay, you'll hit highways soon. As soon as you reach here, we'll have some actual highways for you. That'll be nice. One more thing, however. Once we actually get Spurius Flavius up north, he's going to need an army to meet up with. There's going to be a good amount of common tenses right there. That's absolutely fine. He's bringing the cavalry with him. And that means the one thing he actually needs is archers. So let's actually just get some archers into production at Vicus Franchi, and that will all be absolutely spot on. I mean, I suppose I could also just take this army down south and just attack the Western Roman rebel army, but honestly, they can't get to me right now. There's some rebels just chilling out on the bridge. May as well let them just take care of the rebels for me first, and yeah, potentially if we're lucky, the Eastern Romans might actually attack the Western Roman rebels. That'd be useful. All right, time to figure out what's going on next with the hordes, because arguably, that's the biggest, most important question of all. And the answer is... a Bit of chatting. We don't know what the Huns are doing right now. And, hang on, where... Where did the Vandals just go? And where have most of the Huns gone? Oh, flip, I've lost the hordes. Okay, I can see a few of them over there. I think they're heading towards the actual capital of the... Yes, there we go. So they are now heading towards the Gothic capital. And if they get there and decide to siege it out, honestly, they're going to win. They're 100% going to win. So I'm not sure what we're planning to do about that. Because that horde is very likely to start heading straight in this direction. Fine. If that's what's happening, I've made the right decision. You need to just start heading in this direction as fast as flipping possible. This army can stand up to a horde. Especially if it's got a bridge crossing right here. Now, Marcus the Gambler, who is indeed gambling with his life right now, is dangerously close to the actual capital of the Franks. But he can back off if need be, but I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit worried about him, to be honest. This is probably a very bad place for him. And as for Campus Quaddy, we should be able to just walk straight in. And good luck for me, the peasants are in fact the commander, so we can take out their general unit extremely easily. Now we do have one downside, these guys have got Lombard archers, who are actually pretty bloody good at their jobs. So I don't really want to send my archers up just yet, and this is why I wanted there to be a spare ram, just in case. I need this ram to make it to the gate to make a breach, because if they're capable of actually burning down both rams... We're in a fair bit of trouble here, so hopefully that doesn't happen. And I think they just got their last volley in, and there we go. Now they're absolutely screwed. So as soon as the gates open, and we've actually got some breaches, I can just send my cavalry in, that'll be fine. Because the spearmen are, aha, the spearmen are way back over here on the plaza. Meaning this is just basically, yeah, murder territory for my cav. Right, deploy all cavalry forward as quickly as you flip in. Like everyone else, get in here too. Just get on there, attack everyone. My spearmen should be able to just basically chunk through everything. I'm pretty sure I hear the thundering of hooves coming up. Yeah, that's a flipping lot of horses coming in. We're good, we're good. Get over here, hit these archers if you can. I want them to be not firing if you'd be so kind. Just get on top of them. Don't knock over your own troops. You, get in there and just take out the peasants. You'll be fine taking care of that. These guys will be absolutely screwed. Deploy more and more and more cavalry. Peasants will obviously break almost immediately. That won't be a problem at all. Those guys broke. 
against archers because of course they flipping did just basically yeah pour in more cavalry we will take some losses we can fix up those losses down the line it's fine just getting over here that's all a okay these horses will do their job there we go we're starting to see breaks right there first unit starts to break get in over here knock these guys down you're actually the leader which means they'll get a little bit of a morale bonus but not much and uh, I'd love to actually chase down the archers, please. These guys are shaking. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Why are you... Oh, bloody hell. My own fleeing spearmen are blocking up the gates. Right, we've got one unit and we've taken out the general. Right, we've actually got their general on the run. I would like to hit their Lombard archers before they reach the plaza, but we're not going to be able to. That's really annoying. My own flipping spearman screwed me over. Right, back off, back off, back off. We need to actually come up with a new strategy now. Right, would you please just recover if I use rally on you? Please just uh, chill out. Stop running away. In case you haven't noticed, I'm bringing in reinforcements. Or I would if you weren't blocking them. Oh, we've got lucky here though. The Lombard archers appear to be trying to counterattack. Some of my cavalry have already made it inside the walls. And now we're going to get right on top of these bastards. They will likely... Yeah, there we go. They break immediately. Right, now, now we can ride them down. And once all of their range is taken out, we can just use our archers to take out their spear warbands. Alright, this is going to be messy because these guys won't hold for long. But you guys open fire on the spear warband. Lure them forward into the Barbarian Infantry. And then I've got my cavalry waiting on the flank to just come in and close the trap. Your general's dead. You're not a general unit. I'm hoping that you'll just immediately break. That's right. Keep laying some fire down on them. Keep laying that fire. And they're already shaken. Yep, yeah, in we go, in we go, in we go. You guys, I just need you to hold. And oh, bloody hell, they broke like immediately. Okay, Never mind, that, that happened faster than I thought that was going to happen. In which case, yeah, just shoot them in the back, that's fine. Right, here we go. Now we just close the retreat, close the retreat, close the retreat. Just get across them. Do not let them... Oh, oh, they're shaken. Get across over here, get across over here. And they break. Both units have broken simultaneously. Instant free victory. Nice. Now, this place is currently showing potential for revolts. I'm not sure I actually believe that, to be honest. I think Spurius Flavius can turn this around. Because right now we've got ourselves, a, yes, a shrine to Donar. So that is happiness 5%, paganism 5%. No, 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 no. So if we look over here, this place is already 40% Christian, which is just flipping marvellous. So let's just get rid of that and get this place nice and Christian. Now, this place will almost certainly still riot overnight. But, as long as Spurious Flavius is here, that's actually going to go down. Yeah, 30% down in terms of the happiness overnight. Right there. Job done instantaneously. The downside is, yeah, neighbouring regions, 15%. This is going to be 10% neighbouring regions from the Christian neighbours to the south and 5% on the religious building. So when Spurius Flavius leaves, at that point we've got ourselves a bit of a problem, which is, yeah, it'll just basically hold steady. So I might want to build a proper Christian chapel rather than just the basic shrine, just so there's slightly more impact coming in from Christianity than paganism. And the thing is, I want to keep Spurius Flavius safe. So just for his own safety, I'm going to, yeah, take some hand-picked cavalry, and I'm actually going to move him outside of the city because as long as he's actually in the same region that's all absolutely fine that brings this place down to 30 percent but you can see he's still converting people because i wouldn't mind a watchtower around here anyway just to get you know slightly better visibility of our borders uh, this is a good thing to do so we can just chill out there that way he definitely won't be killed uh, keep an eye on these guys by the way there's the faction leader here no one else so uh, yeah we don't want to try and take him out because just to confirm you cannot avoid a horde by wiping out the family members if you kill the family members if anything happens that would mean a horde faction would cease to exist if they weren't a horde faction they will horde the game will just pull some new leaders out of its ass for them and as for the Huns, I really need to find them, because only a single Hunnic army has currently got this place under siege. Which means, if I had to guess, I would assume it would lose. 
because some of these troops are not great. Whereas this is everything the Sarmatians have and they've got wall defences too. So yeah, I feel like the Sarmatians would win that one. This is, this is interesting. I'm not sure what's going on here. Now, as for Vikas Frankie, we need to find a way to keep these guys nice and calm. Because yeah, I would very much like these guys to be a big centre of training for me and mine. Now, what's the best way I can do that? Probably the best thing I can change is uh, culture penalties by overwriting barbarian buildings with my own. The biggest impact on that will of course be the Great Hall turning this place into a proper Roman city. Can't do that just for the time being. So in which case, a wall. Because that is a barbarian wall right now. And uh, that's also another 5%. Because this stockade is just 5% happiness. A good stone wall is 5% happiness and law. Plus, of course, fighting on the walls works for me. Because my Comet of 10 says will slaughter horde infantry on the walls. And even better, now we actually do have legion barracks in this town. I can start training, Comet of 10 says, with plus three experience and plus one weapons and armor. In fact, thinking about it, I just wasted a giant pile of money retraining and fixing up these Comet of 10 says, because if I just waited an extra turn or two, I could have sent them back to Vikas Frankie, and now I want to retrain them again for an extra two XP. But no matter. And speaking of which, oh, that Celtic army is really starting to get scary, but you may notice these guys don't have much in the way of ranged, and they don't have much in the way of cavalry. It's very infantry heavy, and I'm starting to worry that we're not going to get there in time. If need be, we might need to fall back and just let them take York, and will you naff off? All right, I will get to you in time. Okay, the practice range in London is done. That means I can start archer production in London. That'll help me deal with the Saxons at least. Anywhere that doesn't have paved roads should be given paved roads, so Avaricum can have them. Anyone else still on old dirt roads? No, I think other than that, we're good. And yeah, for the core of the Empire, I would like highways as soon as you flipping can, please. Meanwhile, down with the Berbers. I don't have visibility of their armies right now. Not sure where they've got themselves to. And will you stop flipping besieging me? Get out of here, you. Also, they keep sending diplomats at me. And you know what I do to diplomats? I kill them in order to get free XP for my assassins. I'm actually a little bit concerned by the fact I don't have proper visibility of this road leading into the territory. So I'm just going to actually send this guy to go and uh, build a watchtower in the middle of it. Just so I can actually see what's flipping going on. So the fact he's not in the city for a turn barely even matters. That's absolutely fine. So we'll just get the watchtower down. There we go. That's better. Also, can't help but notice, what happened to that big western rebel army? It was there it is. All right, keep an eye on these bastards. Make sure we know where they are. Right now he's falling back, possibly to Salona. All right, let's figure out what's gonna go wrong next. But Caius Flavius is on the move, you magnificent bastard. You are gonna kick some ass when you get here. And yep, obviously the hordes are moving and they're moving south. Okay, they're reunifying. Not really where I expected them to be either. Now Campus Quaddy understandably, had some rioting. That's okay, warlords hold. Fine, we can fix it. Because now they're up to 70 and 75%. There we go. 65% Christian pressure. We've got ourselves, yeah, 15% unrest next turn, 30 this turn. This guy can just flip settlements to be Christian, like flipping crazy. Which means now, can you actually get into the... No, you can't quite get to Campus Quaddy, but you can cross Frankish territory and slap down a watchtower because why not? And that means Spurious Flavius, you get in here. This place is now up to yellow, which is absolutely fine. Next turn, you can probably march out. Good, good. More flipping cities are starting to expand, which is not good. But I tell you what, towns can have upgrades because that is cheap and that opens up shipwrights. So that is more and more. Marseille, however... That's flipping expensive, but it would open up. Am I really going to build dockyards? I'm probably not going to build dockyards, to be honest. Shipwrights, however, like down here in Spain, that would... Okay, apparently that wouldn't do anything. That's, that's interesting. Possibly they literally don't have enough people to trade with right now. That might be the problem. And Bordeaux is overdue for a governor's palace as well. Go on them. Shipwrights all round if we can. 
Caius Flavius is back in Italy. He has brought one hell of an army and now he's on a highway. So he's going to start moving very, very fast indeed. And yet yeah, that army has re-entered the city unsurprisingly. And this could be an interesting one right here. The Vandals are now, yeah, pretty damn far south. They've got away from the Huns, so they're not going to be in trouble from any of that. The Huns have decided to reunify around the capital of the Sarmatians. It just depends whether they're going to actually do it or not, because they might decide to walk away. But I'm not sure where the Vandals are going. They might just be trying to reunify before they return to Gothic territory. Or they might be heading towards Sirmium. In which case, the Eastern Romans might actually be able to do a lot of damage to them. And that, that could work for me. Oh no, this is interesting. The Saxons are marching north. Which is odd, because York is better defended than Londinium by some way. So they're not going for a softer target. And up north, that's even better defended. They don't want to go against the Celts. I mean, if they do, great, go you bastards. But I don't know where they're going right now. Oh yes, and the Saxons have actually expanded. They took this little territory over here. Honestly, they're running a much smaller army than I'd be expecting by this point in the game. I'm not sure why they're so small. All right, that's all I can do for now. We're just moving the pieces into position. Let's see where the hordes are going next, because uh, the Vandals in particular, their next move is going to be critical for everything that I'm going to do. All right, so, oh yes, of course, get you back inside Carthage. Now you've actually put down uh, that lovely thing there, and there are pirates attacking Carthage too. Bloody hell, that's no good at all. Right, okay, I attack these guys, uh, chase them off. The pirates, however, might be about to attack me, uh, and they'll probably flipping win too. Okay, now this is interesting. They're either heading towards Sirmium, or they could be heading towards Salona. And they might want to take it, I'm not sure. And yeah, those pirates are going to destroy me. Unfortunate, but yeah, pirates are tough and you cannot afford the fleet to deal with them. Right, just pull my fleets back over here to Carolus. That'll be fine for now. And there we go. Campus Quaddy is now up to green smiley face. Yay. Let's actually give them a lovely Christian chapel just to make sure everything's okay. They could actually have their taxes put up at this point. They are up to... They're 86% Christian. I think this is, what, the third turn since I've moved into their territory. Spurius Flavius is ridiculous and I love him. Now, just to keep this place for the time being, Marcus the Gambler can take over for now. Spurius Flavius, meanwhile, he can actually, yeah, take the cavalry, or at least some of the cavalry, and move on. He can take, say, yeah, take those bits and just start moving into... Actually... We can just skip the Frankish territory. Move over here. No. He can't be allowed to step foot inside Vicus Franchi. Because if he's inside Vicus Franchi, he'll convert it to Christianity. He's too good at his job. And I need this place to not be Christian because I like the flipping sacred circle of Wotan. Right now he's inside Vicus Alemanni. Now that place, I'd be happy to go Christian. We don't really need it anymore as an actual pagan production facility. Right, I'm going to lower their taxes immediately because there's about to be some severe religious unrest going on. There is, however, one small problem, which is uh, the Franks are right flipping there. And they are rebuilding. Slowly, but they're doing it. They could attack Campus Quaddy at any moment. Honestly, I probably don't even want someone here in Campus Quaddy. If the Franks take it, they take it. Just enjoy the taxes it's generating while we do have it, and don't worry about it if it does fall. There's nothing we can do. In fact, yeah, I'm abandoning the city now. Marcus the Gambler, I'll have him here for the time being, but next turn, he's moving over to a Quincum. The only way around that would be if, yeah, I could actually persuade the Franks to make peace with me. I'd be willing to pay money for that, all right? Because the Franks could be a useful barrier between me and the Lombardi over here. And once again, Saxons just chilling out outside my territory. This time, buying up mercenaries. What are you guys doing? What do you want? Right, spend some big money getting these Comet Tensors up to strength. But the one I've already upgraded, melee attack 12, missile 13, defense of 28 including 10 armor. Oh, these guys are basically unstoppable. I love it. Actually, here's an interesting thought. So, Vicus Franchi does actually probably have enough paganism between the sacred circle, between the actual pagan people inside it, and between its neighboring barbarian regions to the north 
it could stand up to Spurious Flavius standing inside the territory as long as I don't like demolish the stone circle or anything. So we probably do want to actually get him up there because that's the safest place for him to walk without accidentally converting a crucial settlement to Christianity. And I think we're coming to the crunch point here. The Vandals are possibly about to attack Simeon or Salona. And Caius Flavius, our Caesar, is right inside the same territory. We're heading to a flipping big battle here. And this is pretty crucial. Caius Flavius is all that stands between the Hordes and Northern Italy right now. They cannot be allowed to attack Ravenna or Rome. These places are not defended right now. Northern Italy is extremely vulnerable. And if things get nasty, Spurius Flavius might need to take these troops we're trading up here in Vicus Franci and just swing south to desperately defend Northern Italy from the Hordes. If need be, that's what we need to do. And once again, the Huns have moved away from the Sarmatian capital. I think possibly they might have lost. Because look at this, the Huns are actually looking a bit on the battered side. To me, those are not full strength units. Those guys have taken a battering. And this place is definitely not as strong as it once was either. It's possible the Huns tried to take this place and they failed. Just because this guy is seriously hardcore and he had a lot of flipping units with upgraded weapons. Experience flipping six. So defense of 18 on their runaway slave spearmen. And by the way, I believe this is actually the first female unit that ever existed inside a Total War game. The Sarmatian Virgin Foot Archers. So that's cool. Hang on, no, I'm lying. I am lying because there was a little bonus Amazon settlement in Rome Total War. But this was the first time they showed up in an actual normal playable faction you'd likely run into rather than as a little Easter egg. And as for the Vandals, it looks like, yeah, we've got a target for them. It's Salona. Now that's interesting. That's very, very interesting indeed because uh, if they decide to settle in Salona, a third of their remaining strength will break apart. At that point, we might be able to deal with them with Caius Flavius. That might actually be workable. And honestly, if they do settle here, I might just let them have it. I don't need to hold absolutely everything in the world. All I need to hold to actually win is 34 settlements. I'm currently on at 26. And that needs to include, weirdly, Tarico. I don't know why Tarico, but you know, Tarico together with Carthage, Rome, and Constantinople over there. Those three make a lot more sense to me. I'm surprised Alexandria isn't part of the list, but whatever. So basically, if the Vandals decide they just want to live in Salona, we could just let them, to be honest. It's not the most valuable settlement. It's not bad either. It can have some mines in it, which is nice. It's not a terrible trading position, but honestly, if they want to have it, they can probably just have it. So if the Huns are going to walk away from the Sarmatians, it looks like they're heading towards Gothic territory. Now that's less good, because the Goths are probably not in a position to win an amazing victory against the Huns. These guys had like a massive full stack army of experience 6 units, which is pretty damn hardcore. These guys have got experience 1 units, and like a third of a stack. That is not gonna fly, so we might be looking at a Gothic horde yet. And that's the weird ebb and flow of this game. Some hordes just slowly get worn down, but they might trigger other hordes. So there might be a fresh horde about to spawn in over here. Or they might turn back and just give the Sarmatians another go. We've no bloody clue. And if they don't give the Sarmatians another go, the Sarmatians have now got a seriously badass hardcore army that might itself decide to go and attack the Goths. Or just walk along this road and attack my very soft northeastern territories over here. Who bloody knows? Well, actually, the person who knows is going to be me and you as soon as I click the end turn button. So let's figure out what's going on here. And first, we need to watch a diplomat because I told him to just, you know, get somewhere a bit more on the useful side. Now, what have we got floating around here? We've just got an attack. We're going to lose that. Our fleets are being worn down right now. Very, very worn down indeed, unfortunately. Okay, we've got ourselves some confirmation right there. These guys are now attacking Salona. Salona is an incredibly soft target because it's mostly peasants. These guys are not going to be pulling an amazing victory out of their arse. These guys are not experienced six Amazon warriors or anything. They're just peasants. So now the question is, one, are the Vandals going to finish that siege? And two, if they do, 
are they planning to burn the place down or actually settle there? Diplomatic information here. So yeah, Vandals have attacked the Western Roman rebels. We know about that. And the Burgundy and the Sarmatians are now allies. So uh, these guys and you up here, who we haven't really thought about too much yet. I think they control two territories, I believe. Now, my Frankish friends, how about a ceasefire? And no, they're not really into that. How about a ceasefire in which I pay you some amount of money and toss in trade rights and map information? All right, I'm willing to pay for this. I am a decent, reasonable person. No, they're just not interested. Now, Vika Salamani is at this point, oh, bloody hell, it's immediately flipped to 54% Christian. Oh, no. Oh, flipping no. Right, okay, you move up here, if you'd be so kind, and stay inside this territory while we're just figuring out how to actually move troops over to you. You guys just drop the taxes. I don't really know why the Empress is floating around in Colonia Agrippina. He just flipping is. But yeah, at this point, we've got ourselves... Quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of trouble. You know what? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let the arena finish before we actually Christianize this place fully. We'll have this guy just step down south, spend a single turn in there, finishing the job off. I just want the arena in place, so if need be, I can just turn on daily games just to ease the transition. Saxon's still just floating around here. Celts getting more and more dangerous looking, it must be said. But nothing we can't handle with good, honest Roman steel... Berber's being surprisingly calm right now, to be honest. Are we finally ready for... Oh, we're finally ready for this. Right, you stupid bastards. It's time for some revenge. Good news, lads. We're back. And bless them, they have actually upgraded the shrine to a chapel. They've actually built some barracks. They managed to get sewers down. They've done a good job with this place. Well done. And also, hang on, is that... Uh... No, I thought that was a practice range over there, but no, they haven't built everything, but they have built some good, decent, basic stuff here. So, uh, I will be very glad to take it off you at this point. So would you believe peasants didn't put up too much of a fight? Yeah, you guys are being exterminated. Screw you, you stupid bastards, repair everything up, la di diddly da they're still unhappy. Yeah, the problem is Lepkis Magna will never be happy. Nothing will ever make them satisfied. Ah, yes, and there's a fairly major Berber army right there, and uh, a leader coming in. Do we have enough troops in Carthage? I don't know, but we do have the ability to train Cometa 10 says there now, which is uh, welcome. Very, very welcome indeed. Probably best we get ourselves, yeah, a few more archers, a few more spearmen, a few more Cometa 10 says. That'll all be absolutely fine, and uh, actually... We do have a fair bit of money just jingling around in our pocket right now, which is probably a very good opportunity for me to get down something very, very important indeed. So, this game had a very interesting mechanic in it, which is if you wanted more generals, you could have them. You just needed the right infrastructure. So over here in the Circus Maximus, you will see the Imperial German Bodyguard. This is basically a train-your-own-general button. They're very, very expensive indeed, and you need a Circus Maximus to do it. But, honestly, it's worth it. Because sometimes you just need another general. So let's actually get that queued up. That is a very, very good use of money. Meanwhile, Marcus the Gambler makes his way to a Quincum and actually makes it, yeah, make less money because he's not very good at his job in the slightest. That's all absolutely flipping fine. And uh, Caius Flavius. Probably, I don't want him getting too close to the Vandals. I don't want to start a war with them until I know what I'm up against and I know what they're planning to do with Salona. So for the time being, who are you? There's just a single unit of peasants. You know what? I think we can handle that. But I'm going to do it manually because the AI would probably somehow manage to actually pick up some casualties. Oh, this is a nice thing to see. A proper Roman army for once. Hardcore legionaries making up the front line. Behind them, nice and protected, Roman archers with some good experience. Hardcore spearmen protecting the flanks from cavalry. A good quality Roman general and some really solid heavy cavalry right there with some big ass swords. Now this is the sort of army you want to have. It's beautiful. Yeah, this over here, this is not the sort of thing you want to be facing off against. Like, especially if you're not barbarian peasants, but just in general, this is a hardcore army that'll do the job. 
This is a heroic victory, worthy of Roman arms! I'm gonna be honest, narrator man, heroic is not the word I'd go for. Like, amusing, target practice, sure, both of them. Heroic, not so much. Okay, so now we simply wait to see what the Vandals are planning to do, and the Huns as well, because they are starting to look, yeah, a little bit on the battered side. I like that. I like that they're starting to look a little bit battered. The Sarmatians have done me a very, very big favour there. But first, the March of the Diplomat. Oh, the Franks are definitely gearing up for something. Fortunately, it's a very large number of peasants, for the most part. So, uh, we can probably put it down, whatever it is, and- Oh, that's more flipping cities. I can do without that, though actually, you know what? You could definitely have a governor's palace. That's absolutely fine. And Londinium too. Yeah, palace for them, because then we can get some walls up in London. Then even if everything goes wrong with the Saxons or the Celts, we can cower in London quite effectively. And Alliance. The the Franks of the Eastern Empire. Oh, screw you. The Vandals are sort of new to sacking cities, by the way. You can tell because they've built ladders in order to try and take a city with large walls, which ladders don't work against. So interesting decisions going on here. Oh flip, the Huns are actually going back for another crack at the Sarmatians. They've not given up yet. They definitely did attack last time and they still have a lot of flipping manpower. They could pull it off, but yeah, it just feels like with every single victory, the Sarmatians are getting stronger and stronger. Okay, so, the situation around Vicus Alemanni, which right now, because, you know, Spurius Flavius walked through it briefly, is uh, that is now 50% Christian, 50% paganism, with Christianity just in the flipping majority. So this is all marvellously good news. So I think it's actually time. We're going to take down the Shrine of Mithras, and we're going to put up the Christian Shrine instead. Because, yeah, Vicus Franchi is actually looking like it's in good shape for the time being. 110% public order with a normal tax rate. The actual, yeah, the culture penalty is going down. Unrest will go down over time. Distance to capital is not bad. Squalor's not bad at all. Now, that's obviously going to get worse because right now it's tiny. But it's actually growing not that fast, which is good news as far as I'm concerned. Probably best we just give these guys an arena just so we can put on games if need be. Still no movement from the flipping Celts, but at this point, I think we're just going to take them out. We're just going to knock them out with this force. Though on the way, I think we're going to kill the Saxons. Because I think we actually can. They're weirdly just not building. And just to make sure Vicus Alemanni doesn't go too mad, I'm going to put them onto daily games to offset the religious problems I'm literally about to create. In fact, you know what? Just for safety... Opius, you're out of there. Swap places with Gratianus, the Lily Livers. So that's going to be, yeah, bad for this place. That's fine. Put them back down to normal. This place is now Christian. And as a result of that, happier. Actually, we're fine with flipping yearly games. That's, that's interesting. Okay, that's actually pretty darn good, all things considered. That's been pretty easy to do. Possibly we don't even need Spurious Flavius to go down there and actually sort this place out. At this point, yeah, it might just happen by itself. Over time, that paganism will just wear down. Yeah, actually, I think we're good. And even better, another mercenary golden band shows up. So now we've got some hardcore mercenary hitting power of our own. Beautiful. And the Berbers are most definitely invading at this point. There is a major invasion underway. And you are... Uh-oh. It would appear the Berbers have learned their lesson. They've sent someone who's very hard to assassinate. Right, okay. Are there any mercenaries around here that we could purchase? Because we need troops in a flipping hurry, including... Ooh, armoured camels. They're not actually that good, but, you know, they're kind of hilarious. These guys are surprisingly cheap to hire, to be honest. I mean, that's... That's cheap as chips. Yeah, you know what? We'll have one of you and one of you. abso flipping lootly. Get back in the city and now just start hiring some more flipping troops. Oh, we're already hiring troops. Right, this is, this is going to be good. All right, both the hordes now putting cities under siege. Let's see what we got going on next. But first, this diplomat, one day, one day he's going to make it somewhere useful. It's going to be wonderful. All right, Carthage has indeed been attacked by the Berbers. It's a small force for now, though. He hasn't waited for his entire army to show up. And oh, that's, that's a hell of an army that's coming. 
together with even more flipping people. Can we assassinate him at least? Uh, yes, we can assassinate you. Good, we can take care of you. That's not a problem at all. A few new children coming through. That's nice. It'll take them like, you know, 32 turns to actually get there. But screw it. Sooner or later, that'll be useful. No movement on Salona. These guys are just building up. Hang on, who's actually doing the siege? It's you. Yes, you're just building more and more ladders that don't actually get used for anything. Well done. And no movement from the actual Huns either. I think it's you putting this place under siege. More flipping battering rams. All right, keep a close eye on all of these bastards. Well, I just send my spy around just to make sure I fully understand the lay of the land here. And yeah, it looks like the Eastern Roman Empire is actually pretty well prepared for the possibility of hordes. They've got some decent armies protecting all of their cities because uh, they can flipping afford it. Okay, one thing to do with the main army of Spurius Flavius, the most Christian man who ever Christianed. Send him himself over to Vix Salamani. He immediately takes control of the city because he flipping can because he's amazing. And that means, uh, yeah, next turn, pagan unrest is going down from 35% to 10%, which means we can start making some money a lot faster. His troops, however, they step inside here because, oh bloody hell, the city's too bloody full. Because as I was saying, these guys need some retraining. Beautiful. So we've already got, yep, yeah, hardcore spearmen to hand over and we're not going up against much cavalry. We've got five units of heavy legionaries. We can probably do better than that, to be honest. Let's just actually give him one more. We'll retrain the cavalry for more XP. And Jep, he can just pop back up next turn once he's fully Christianized this place and just actually take possession of all of that. All right, we need to see off this force before his friends arrive and I start suffering attrition. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. You are nothing major, to be honest. In fact, sword bearer. Right, plus one to personal security. Other than that, you're kind of terrible, actually. So let's just quickly murder you. Especially as you forgot to bring any ranged units whatsoever. So this is all marvellous. Here we go. For the second time in a row, the Berbers have decided, wait, hang on, this is a catastrophically stupid idea. I'm taking my camels and going home. But they'll be back because they've actually got a proper army on the way. Still, once again, no casualties. Honestly, the Berbers mostly just spend their time attacking Carthage because they've got nothing else to do. So that's all absolutely fine. But yeah, the next attack... That's the big one. Also, the Franks appear to have just pulled an extra three leaders out of their arse. So that's good. I really approve of that. Let's just stop murdering them if we can. Did we get him? No, missed the target. That's a shame. It was a bit of a coin flip. We'll keep going. All right, I'm not having you just pulling an extra three leaders out of your arse. But this here is what makes Horde Faction so flipping dangerous. He's just chilling out in this little town, building up, building up, building up. And I can't just keep a full stack army floating around nearby just to keep an eye on him. But I can't kill him, otherwise he'll become a horde, at which point he's ten times more dangerous. So, yeah, the horde factions. Fascinating, brilliant mechanic. I absolutely love it. And once a flipping again, the Huns have decided to call off the siege. Possibly they did attack and, yeah, they managed to kill some units, but I think they're actually losing. I think the Huns are losing against the Sarmatians right now. Though, of course, every time they lose, they are picking up battle experience as well, so they are getting stronger. But at this point, the Sarmatians are just slightly ludicrously tough. Yep, they definitely attacked those guys because there are less troops there than there were before, so they still can't break in. All right, that bodyguard, that is some nasty stuff right there. 28 defense, 19 attack, charge bonus of 6. Bloody hell. And you guys are into gold chevrons at this point. And hello, the Western Roman rebels have been put down for good, and that means uh, these guys uh, have just sacked Salona. And as we can see there, we've actually got ourselves, yeah, a bunch of peasants, but also herdsmen, a rebel general, and some runaway slave spearmen have just been spawned out of nowhere. So yeah, Salona's garrison is kind of a combination of stuff they're able to train there, plus like just a few other bits and pieces. So it's a bit of an odd mishmash. And if I'm very, very lucky indeed, it looks like you are heading south. Down towards, yeah, Thessalonica and down towards is it Athens. Yeah, it's Athens. That's the other one. I couldn't remember whether it was Athens or Sparta, but it was indeed Athens. 
And that's looking very vulnerable right there. Yeah, if the Vandals just want to head south and just basically smash the Eastern Empire, that works for me. That very much works for me. Not least as Caius Flavius can just follow behind them and take this city straight back for me. Now, Vika Salamani, this place is now straight up to 88% Christian. Oh, I love Spurious Flavius. He's flipping great. So as a result of that, we can now tax them more highly. You are now ready to begin marching on. Is there anything this guy can give you? No, we probably don't want to hand over the mother-in-law. You probably wouldn't mind the mother-in-law being handed over, but no. No, he probably doesn't want the mother-in-law because he's actually flipping good. Oh, by the way, this reminds me. Fun bit of history. People were saying, why is Gratianus the Lady Livid so flipping cowardly? Like, was there a reason the devs made him like this? Yes and no. This guy here is a historical figure. He's clearly supposed to be Gratian, who was actually Valentinian the Great's eldest son and historically the next emperor. Why they made Gratian so cowardly... I don't know. Gratian wasn't remembered as a good emperor, but he's not remembered as a coward either. His positioning makes a lot of sense though, because I believe he starts the game in Augusta Vindelicorum over here, and Gratian absolutely spends some time on the Germanic frontier. So his placement makes a lot of sense, and his name makes a lot of sense. I just don't know why they decided to character assassinate an unremarkable emperor who died over a thousand years ago. I'm just not quite sure who decided to do that. Plus, the family tree also doesn't make a huge amount of sense. So, yeah, we've got Valentinian the first up here, but his children aren't actually his historical children. So, we've got Leontius over here, and Aulus Flavius here, and Caius Flavius over here, and, yeah, Cassius the Lilivered. Those aren't the names of his actual children. His actual historical child is, in fact, his grandchild in this game, Gratianus the Lily Livered. So I'm not quite sure why they changed that and didn't just make Gratianus one of his children, because that would have made a lot more sense. So there's some historical accuracy here, but there's also some things that just seem kind of arbitrary. Oh, bloody hell. I just told my assassin to try and take out one of the Frankish leaders and he got himself killed. It's a bit of a shame. He was a decent assassin. Oh well, sometimes it happens. But here's the big one. Spurious Flavius is ready to march the hell out. So, you get round over here onto the bridge. And, yep, you're on your own right now. Any chance of? No, no more flipping mercenary golden bands. Congratulations, my good man. I have prepared quite the bloody army for you. For your front line, six heavy legionaries with three experience and upgraded weapons. Melee attack 12, defense 28. They will stand and fight all day. To guard your flanks, some barbarian spearmen. Defense of 22, bonus fighting cavalry. Solid flank right there. And for those special occasions, a mercenary golden band. These guys will murder anything you throw them at. Obviously, Spurish will be needing some fire support, so how about five archers with experience three for missile attack of eight? And those cavalry you brought with you, I decided to just upgrade them for you too. So defense of 17, attack of 10, fast moving, bloody lovely. Congratulations, I think you've got yourself a pretty decent army there. And go on, you can take some experience for Limitane with you, purely because they're not really needed in Augusta Trevorum. And you're going to need something to leave behind when you actually sack a settlement so we don't need to leave behind the good quality stuff. So, I think we're heading north because the Saxons need to be knocked out of the flipping game. Oh, flip. Valentinian the Great is dead. Though, to be honest, he didn't really deserve the name the Great in our universe. He was just Valentinianus the Wrathful. I mean, he did alright. There were a lot of problems with the Empire, and under his rule, we've sorted them out, but it wasn't really him that did most of it, if we're perfectly honest. I mean, due credit to him, he did actually successfully lead the assault on Vicus Franci. So he did lead the military on the Germanic frontier, which is very historically appropriate because Valentinian the Great was remembered as a good emperor because he did some good work on the Germanic frontier and he expanded the empire in that direction, which is exactly what Valentinian the Great did. Now, historically, his eldest son Gratian should now become the Western Roman Emperor and not generally be particularly well remembered. But that's not what's happened here. Instead, no, 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 no. We have got a brand new emperor here. Emperor Caius Flavius. A Christian, a good defender, a confident commander. He is brave, a great vanquisher, refined taste, and the Augustus himself. 
Now traveling around with a historian, together with, yeah, plus two influence, plus two loyalty. Hopefully the emperor wouldn't flip sides, but you can never be too sure. Also, perhaps somewhat concerningly, I've, um, I've lost the horde. I don't know where the horde's gone. I thought they'd be heading in this direction, but I don't think they are. Uh-oh. Where's the Vandal Horde? If they're not over here, then... Oh, they might just be hiding around here. They couldn't have made it that far. Oh, they might be over here. Uh-oh. I'm a bit worried the Horde might actually be coming in my direction. So the Huns are once again just vaguely gathering around Sarmatian territory, and uh, the Sarmatians have got to be running out of steam at this point. They're literally running out of units, but the units they do have are bloody hardcore. Not sure what the Huns are planning to do next, but no fairness, that's better than my information about the actual Vandals. I don't know where they've gone. I mean, they can't all be hiding behind this one mountain range. They wouldn't fit. So, in which case... Oh dear. Right, we might be in a spot of difficulty here. I've lost a horde. Now that immediately gets Colonia Agrippina down to, uh, yeah, some slightly worse public order. But that should be fine. Uh, because uh, Spurius Flavius is coming through. And... Uh, I don't think this is standing in his way. I don't think that's standing in his way at all. Thankfully, the Celts have not yet moved. This is good. They're not attacking us. Also, just quickly check here. Who's actually the new faction X? We might want to change that too. Cassius the... No, not Cassius the Lily-Livered. Most definitely not. We need to pick someone else. Though actually, I think one person probably deserves it more than anyone else. Spurious Flavius. Sharp, which is great. Tactician, which is great. Favoured of God, okay, maybe he's a little bit assassinatable, but that's fine, because once he's Emperor, he'll be much harder to assassinate. Night Fighter, obviously we know all about the Christianity business. Sadly, yeah, he's not good at the old uh, trade income, but if we just keep him on the move, he's 34. He'll be around for quite some time yet. I think, actually, Spurius Flavius has done more than enough to earn the right to be called Kaiser. Congratulations, my good man. You are going to be our next emperor. And in the meantime, you are going to smash the hell out of some Saxons. Here we go. We've got London ready to flip and go here. We could make, oh, we could make crazy money by upgrading that. Yeah, go, 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 go. Get a shipwright set up in London. London can make some seriously big money. Though it must be said, the new emperor is in, yeah, a bit of a difficult position, which is he's probably just around the corner from some flipping hordes. And I have absolutely no idea where those hordes are, so I'm keeping him on the river crossing right here. That's a pretty safe place for him. Diplomat update. He's just about passing Mediolanium right now. He will soon be across Italy. Marvellous. Oh, the Huns are having another flipping go at it. They are genuinely having another go at the Sarmatians. And the thing is, if they do eventually win, even if it cripples the Huns to do it, if they actually take out the Sarmatians, the Sarmatians will hoard. So arguably, from the point of view of screwing me over, it will have all been worth it. And speaking of which, uh-oh. Okay, I was worried the Franks were going to attack me, but they're not attacking me. They're just sitting in a big fort, right outside Lombardy territory. Oh, if they start attacking these factions up here, they might trigger even more hordes that way. Oh dear, right. And we do indeed have visibility of the actual hordes right here. Good, so, oh bloody hell, I'm, I am dangerously, dangerously close by to a horde right now. Okay, what do we actually know about these bastards? Nothing, because my spy went the wrong way. You, get over here, figure out who they are and what they want. I mean, there's a whole bunch of just flipping peasants and whatnot. These guys are wounded, wounded. I mean, is this the right place to make a stand? There's not a bridge. It must be said, there is no bridge. But, it is a river crossing. That's very narrow. And my troops probably have the armour... To stand up to... Oh, flip. These guys could just attack me. Any second. We are not at war yet. But they'll just attack anything they like the look of, to be honest. But perhaps the biggest concern is... If they don't attack the Emperor... Then this guy is... Probably one or two turns away from Ravenna. Which is guarded by... A single unit of spearmen. And Mediolanium. Which is guarded by a single unit of peasants. And then Rome, which is guarded by Decimus Flavius, who is a very good administrator, but not a very good commander. And some light cavalry. This, this could be a problem. All of a sudden, I'm feeling like this army isn't really, uh, 
Is it really enough? Is it? No. No, it's not. I think we might actually want to be getting the army of Aquincum moving down south in a flipping hurry. And I think you guys probably want to start training new armies, actually. Let's get some new armies into production. Like, right the flip now, actually. Including, yeah, our first ever auxilia, Palatina. These guys are pretty damn badass. The Plumbatari, they're damn solid, too. We've got the foundry here as well. Plus two to light weapons, plus two to heavy weapons, plus two to missile, plus two to armor. Unit strength here are pretty damn badass. Yeah, let's get some troops in production. We definitely need Rome to be protected. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to save northern Italy though. If they just decide they're determined to march in, they could take it. I mean, what else can I do to defend myself here? I don't know. We've got some really, really damn good walls. So we can put up one hell of a defense against the small force. Screw it. Operation Panic. Begin training just a handful of extra units. Basically, oh, Mediolanium has basically nothing in it. We can't trade a thing here. Right, get some Limitane there at the bare flipping minimum. And just start pumping out units as fast as we flipping can up north. Here we go, Vicus Frankie. We've got ourselves yet more bloody infantry coming in. And let's get an armorer down there as well. Let's get upgraded weapons and armor. Spot on and... As you're already here, it's time. Spurius Flavius, we need to convert the heathens to Christianity. All right, get in there. Take these places over. Knock out the Saxons. Christianize the whole area. This is probably a thing I should have checked before we actually began this war. But I can't help but notice that the Saxons have actually been hiring all of the uh, British mercenaries, including Grail Knights, which is basically just cataphracts, but British, who have a defense of 31 and an attack of 15, and a charge bonus of 7. These guys are ludicrous on toast. I think it might be time for me to actually give up York for the moment. I think we need to fall back to London and just focus on holding London, because the Saxons are going to counterattack, and I don't really want to fight them, because if I fight them, I'm going to be extremely vulnerable to these bastards who just get more and more and more flipping scary. So, yeah, screw it. York is basically being abandoned at this point. We are just going to uh, leave behind most of that. We can't actually... Uh-oh. I can't actually make it all the way down to London. Because these guys are blocking my... Oh, that's... That's no good. Right, okay. This is fine. This is all 100% fine. This is stuff I probably should have considered before declaring war on the Saxons. But that's okay. Just get every unit we can to join up with these guys. If they're planning to attack us, we should be able to defend ourselves. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'd say that is enough for now. Things are about to go completely flipping mental. We can wipe out the Saxons, potentially, before they could take York, but that might bait the Celts further south, meaning they'll end up with York, which they've had before, but they might actually take it by force this time. But if I knock out the Saxons, these guys will become rebels, but then will they keep the mercenaries? I don't even flipping know. And at any given moment, Spurius Flavius might need to rush home to deal with the ever so slight issue that there are actually barbarians on the doorstep. The Vandals are about to flipping hit Italy, which is historically appropriate because the Vandals did actually hit Italy. Not this route, they came via a really stupid convoluted route by like going through Spain and then like looping around and all sorts of nonsense. But the Vandals are on their flipping way. It's my Emperor's first day and he might need to defend himself against the Vandal hordes. And up north, the Huns might be about to trigger the Sarmatians a flipping again. There is a lot going on, ladies and gentlemen. We will see how all of that shakes out next time. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. This has been Rome to the War with Barbarian Invasion. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then in come the chariot!